Hello and welcome to another podcast episode of the project BioFruitNet. My name is Sophie Tanner and I'm meeting online with two experts on citrus fruit growing. Good morning. I am Vincenzo Verrastro. I am a PhD. I am the scientific administrator of SEAM Bari. And within the project BioFruitNet, I am the responsible of the, of the Teritus group, of the working group on citrus. Today we will discuss upon uh, the melibug, the Planococcus citri, with one of the most important problems uh, in uh, organic citrus orchards. I am Giancarlo Rocuzzo. I am a researcher working on organic citrus. I work in a uh, research center for uh, olive, fruit and citrus groves in my lab is in Sicily and I collaborate with uh, Vincenzo on some topics about biodiversity and orchard management. Great. Okay, so um, let me start by asking uh, my first question, which is what are the most important challenges in growing citrus fruit organically? Well, uh, depends on the point of view we want to see about this, uh, this problem. There are several problems in organic citrus production. Some of them are linked to market problem. Some of them are linked to quality problem. But the most important ones that sometimes gave us the possibility to lose a relevant part of our production are the ones coming from pests. Between the pests, we should divide uh, in uh, the two new problems, the one coming from the so-called alien pests, who are pests who are imported from other countries because uh, globalization and climatic change, unfortunately, creates new problems within the orchards of citrus. But there are some that even if they come from abroad, they are a permanent problem in uh, uh, citrus organic orchards, the one that gives us uh, the major economic concern in terms of losing the production, having uh, troubles with them. One of the most important between this one is uh, in Latin name, the Planococcus citri or Citrus melibug. Well, uh, the citrus growing chain are affected from this problem. Uh, this is quite well spread among all the Mediterranean countries in which organic citrus are quite important, such as Spain, such as Italy, including even Greece, and sometimes even the Corsica island, in, the, in which there is a growing production of organic citrus. And recently we found a relative increase of citrus melibug in the attacks on, on them. Probably because uh, the limited knowledge of efficiency of some products uh, in fighting against uh, the citrus melibug. The main control measures that we have for this citrus melibug are preventive and curative. And some of them um, include the use of some sticky fiber glasses around the trunk, which is quite common in the Italy, especially the southern part takes place even in Spain, which is the other country mostly involved in these uh, preventive measures. But uh, before entering in some details, uh, the most important topic to discuss is that uh, we have to study the life cycle of the citrus melibag in order to have some preventive and efficient measures of control of them. <laughs> Uh, the aspect of this uh, citrus melibug uh, is a white uh, presence, uh, is a, a small, uh, it's not more than a couple of centimeters big, uh, and has a shape, um, oval shape, uh, seems like a, a, a small uh, tip, white, on different part of the crop. They seem not to move, uh, because their mobility is quite slow, but sometimes uh, they have an autobus, they have some carriers, and the carriers are the ants. So, whatever you go, and uh, what is the most important aspect of control of this pest, that is observation, going into the field, taking into account which are the main movements, the first thing that should alarm some farmers is the number is the increasing number during the summer period, late spring period, of ants. 
the ants start to move all around the trees, all around the trunks, and this is a signal, is an important aspect, in which they will be the carriers of these uh, pests on the important part of the crop in which they can generate damages. So the ants are the first alarm sign, and sometimes, for instance in Spain is quite common, the use of sugar, sugar for provisioning them, is one of the preventive measures that they use in order to fight against the movements of the, of the ants on the trees and the presence of citrus medibug. For this instance, sometimes, the treatments uh, preventive that you can do against the pest is to use these white oils uh, all around the trunk of the trees in order to prevent these movements and their presence because normally they try to hide under the bark of the trunk uh, in order to preserve themselves. Normally, or better, historically speaking, this kind of uh, citrus mellibug have been controlled through chemical substances uh, in conventional agriculture as well in organic agriculture. A lot of them can be still used and are used for uh, control them in the places in which uh, monitoring and feeding behavior or feeding in general um, activities have been not evaluated. So normally we have the use, for instance, of uh, piretro, piretrum the use of uh, orange oils, in which we have more than five treatments per year according to the level of attack, and the use uh, even of, uh, in, or in conventional agriculture, of some uh, pesticides, uh, who are not so advantageous because they are very costly and normally they, don't, they have not a big efficacy on them. What is important to do is to understand which kind of uh, other kind of control measures we can use. The most important ones are based basically on uh, the use of uh, beneficial insects. Beneficials uh, are, uh, may offer a sustainable alternative to the use of chemicals, but uh, without monitoring, without any kind of control uh, in the efficacy of the relay of beneficials, and mostly without uh, any long-term experiment uh, of application of the beneficial, the real aspects, the real positive aspects of using them could not be appreciated from the farmer or from the agronomist that does it. So, once we move to the use of beneficial, the most important thing is to speak about a strategy. And a strategy could not, be last, could not last only one year. Giancarlo, do you have some... Uh, visual experience that you had uh, in your country. I belong to Puglia region, who is always in the south of Italy, while Giancarlo lives in Sicily, who is probably the most important uh, region in Italy for organic citrus production. Well, uh, we have a long-term experience, as you say, on uh, biological control, on the mellibuck, and we, we will go on that afterwards. But I think you were, uh, I agree with you once we, you uh, cited life cycle and all the, the soil and the, the other organisms like ants uh, and uh, the uh, pre juvenile uh, stadium of. Uh, th these insects that can be affected also by uh, orchard management. That is, uh, they have many shelters and uh, the biological control works, but not at the first year with the full control, on my opinion, but you have to build a diverse system to, uh, and you use these uh, beneficials uh, in a complex system to uh, multiplicate the effects of the biological control that we know in, in a medium, long term, works very well. So which, um, which insects are beneficials and what elements can you provide for them in the orchard? 
First of all, I would like to add just a small comment to what Giancarlo said, to which I fully agree, because uh, even the perception of uh, the consumer point of view about the use of uh, insects against insects uh, is well perceived. Consumers do like the um, use of similar because the, you are not using a chemical to control them. So this is quite important even for the communication strategy about the organic citrus control. The most important uh, insects that you can use as antagonists to the uh, citrus melibug are the Leptomastix dactylopi and the Cryptolemus montruzeri. Unfortunately, I don't know if there is an English version of these Latin names, I think, I think no. And uh, Latin uh, for us, for the Italians even, is something that we know, we manage very well. Anyway, we, they have two different uh, mechanisms of, uh, uh, of work, let's say. The Leptomastix is a parasitoid. So it lives uh, on the, the uh, melibug and it has the necessity to be uh, used near them and to be, uh, let's say, in touch with them in order to uh, in establish himself as ex-laying uh, within the citrus melibug. While the Cryptolemus montreuxer is a predator, so it has a, a different strategy of approach. Even the numbers and the quality of the lunch of the insects must be well investigated and adapted to the legal on the farms. For instance, the use of the Leptomastix should be earlier than the one of the lunch of the Cryptolemus. Because normally it happens within the man, depends on which you have the citrus orchard. May, in medium, we work, we start at the beginning of May early spring, beginning of summer, with the first launches of Leptomastix that, are, uh, that should be established and controlled in the place in which we have the presence of Cryptolem, of Melibug. I told before that the, you have an alert message, and the alert message is the presence of ants. So not the presence of Melibug on the trunk of the trees, but the presence of, of ants is an alert message. Once we see some movements, we have to go in the field and launch the leptomastics. This can happen mainly in May until July. From July on, it is necessary to spread the cryptolemus, because probably, even if the leptomastics did its job, the cryptolemus will finish the job. And so we'll enter in a second moment as a predator of the remaining melibugs. There are some precautions that we have to do and this leads me even to some other points of discussion in using the lunches of beneficials. This, uh, as I said before, happens mainly during the summer period. And uh, the temperatures, the average of temperatures of which we are used here in the southern part of Italy, but I think as well as, well as in Spain, can bring us to launch the insects uh, uh, at 30 something, 35, 33, 34 degrees, which is not well. Because uh, normally they are grazed within some uh, insectarium or some breeding facilities in which the level of temperature is around 25 or 28 degrees. This uh, sort of difference between uh, the rearing moment and the launching moment uh, can generate a lot of loss, of loss of the ones because they die for the shock that they have from the temperature in which normally they are in the open field. So there are some precautions to be taken into account. The first one is to do, do possibly in the late afternoon, beginning of the evening, because they will have more time for adapt themselves to the low temperature that will be more in touch with the one on which they grow. The second one is to think about even about the transport. To put the insects in one cages, in one small envelope or in some other tools that we used to do before taking from the reading moment to the launching moment generates always a certain level of mortality. And the transport is another big, big problem because if they lose a lot of distance, they will be shocked and they will die. 
So the number of insects that could die from the moment in which I decide to launch until the moment of launch normally generates a loss between the 10 and the 25, even 30 percent. One of the suggestions that we have for the one who are going to use this strategy is to have, as possible as they can, the nearest distance between rearing moment and launching area. Giancarlo, what do you think about uh, these problems? Or Well, once you, you can do that, but uh, as an example, you uh, visited here in Sicily uh, the place in which uh, all these uh, beneficials are uh, produced and are grown and, and produced, and you have uh, in very hot periods one hour uh, so of, of you know of travel to to reach the farm. So maybe some uh, small fridges or something to uh, you know transport in the best way and as you were saying to uh, put this beneficial not in at noon but preferably uh, in, in the afternoon in the, in the last in the fresher parts of, of the day <laughs> Thinking about that Leptomastix and Cryptolemus should have even a different number for the launching. The Cryptolemus should be launched not, not less than 21 per crop. So we are speaking about 5,000 or every launch for orchard, considering one hectare as a surface. Leptomastix could be of a shorter number because it's quite efficient, but uh, the, the distance between one lunch and the other of Letomastic should be not more than one week, so closer than the one between Cryptolemus that could be even, let's say, between a couple of weeks between the first and the second, according even to the present. But I should affirm that launching is not enough. Monitoring is fundamental because if we don't understand if not the mailbox is controlled, but the, let's say, installation, the presence of leptomastics or cryptolemus is stable within the orchard, we have done nothing. That's why speaking with the farmer sometimes it's complicated to, to explain that in order to achieve some good results from this activity, you need more than one year. And probably tears are not enough. You need three, four, five years of continuum feeding the presence of them in the field. Otherwise, no results will occur. Uh, if you work in some, uh, let's say, strategies in which we think that uh, to clean uh, under the canopy the soil and not using uh, a good, uh, let's say, spontaneous or mixed crops under the orchard, under the canopy of the citrus orchard, is efficient, uh, this leads uh, to some uh, disequilibrium between the upper part and the soil level. So, Giancarlo, in your experience, coming from a long-term experience, as you said before, in organic citrus fertility, soil fertility management, is there, is there new suggestions or new strategies that we can uh, advise the farmer in order even to improve the quality of the soil and the system between crop soil and environment? Yes, definitely. That's a, there is a, uh, you know, psychological problem uh, with farmers, uh, mainly uh, in Spain, in my experience, but also in Sicily, that they like to see uh, very clean soil without, uh, without just uh, uh, weeds or spontaneous flora, uh, call them as you want, but they, there is a, a, a problem of, uh, you know, I'm, uh, that's my habit, that's what I want to. So that's that transition to agroecology in general, uh, organic or whatever, just to convince uh, 
uh, that uh, the people that uh, they are not enemies. You can you have to manage the system uh, to uh, go. Uh, the, there is someone who says from university to diversity, no, from uniformity to, to diversity. Yes, because um, we were um, we were discussing with a colleague of that uh, also Vincenzo knows, a professor of uh, the local university, University of Catania. Uh, that was uh, amazing, uh, and he said. Okay, we work on biological cycles, we work on uh, insects and uh, their enemies. But as Vincenzo said at the beginning uh, of this uh, discussion, uh, life cycles are quite complex. So uh, uh, one part of the uh, life of this insect is in soil and we don't know, there is very few studies about the effects of organic matter and increased effects on uh, the first part of the life cycles of these bugs. I mean, uh, is a problem of also scientific experience that is not so robust to mix uh, knowledges and to see how the increase of organic matter in soil, the mm, effects of cover cropping uh, and so on, can affect life cycles of pests and of their enemies. What uh, Vincenzo was saying before uh, is quite common uh, to have uh, this kind of inundative uh, uh, I don't know the, the, the word in, in English, I Lunch. beg your pardon. Lunch. Lunches. Lunches, uh, because the, it happens that many uh, cultural practices kills before the, the, the good ones uh, much more than the uh, insects, the, the, the pests we want to uh, manage to control, let's say, not to kill, because and that's the the, the reason for uh, we need to have uh, yearly massive launches of these beneficials. It's funny because um, I had a recording about biodiversity some days ago, ago and their one conclusion was uh, to leave your farm unclean. And I think this goes into what you're saying, to not clean away all the spontaneous flora, but to use it as an element for um, to increase biodiversity. So. Yes, we, we, we used to, to do, we, we do some uh, trials also uh, in a participative way with some uh, agronomists, farmers and so on. And I always have to, to you know, <laughs> uh, to fight, to have just one strip left for reseed, a, a, a useful ground cover, a cover crop or whatever, to have some uh, off-season flowering that is useful for beneficial, to have, but uh, of course you have to uh, have a deep knowledge about that because many times uh, you can have some side effects. So, uh, but uh, we we insist to have, uh, uh, as you said, a dirty <laughs> uh, ground, uh, just because it's very useful and more not only for fertility but also for, let's say, ecosystem management. Giancarlo, what do you think about managing the soil uh, in a long-term vision? Uh, using, uh, bro for instance, local sources, such as composting, uh, such as different other kind of... Uh, uh, because I think that the orchards, especially the citrus one, uh, tries a very good benefit from the recycle of the organic matter. Yes, that's real and we, we are trying to uh, have the dissemination from 
since many years about, as an example, the use of the residues of uh, uh, orange juices, uh, whose name is in Sicilian pastazzo, like pasta, but it's just a, a mass. Similar. <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, uh, just now uh, it is used for uh, uh, anaerobic uh, plants uh, digestion uh, as a feed in the ingestate mixture, so there is some competition. But since um, uh, orchards uh, in our situation are uh, really open system so you just you you just pick the oranges and 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 as, as i was saying there is the habit to feed with the external sources so uh, we had more than 20 years ago a program to demonstrate that with pruning residues some uh, weeds, let's say, and uh, this kind of material, pastazzo, that is residues that come back in the farm, just to try to some extent to close biogeochemical cycles of uh, organic matter and nutrients. And what we said, uh, what we, 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 saw, we saw at that time, it was an uh, augmentation in uh, biodiversity, uh, mainly in uh, uh, soil mesofauna, and of course, uh, organic matter increase. And as a final effect, there was uh, an increase in uh, feeding roots, in small, very small roots. That is the part that. Uh, uh, allows to the, the uptake of subs water, nutrients, and whatever. So there was the what we now call biostimulation of uh, the, the root apparatus. We also uh, saw uh, the increase of this kind of mesofauna that, in my opinion, uh, can have a role in uh, pest control. There are few studies, and that's really complicated to, to be performed, uh, since soil is a very, very, very complex ecosystem. There are many predators of insect predators in soil. And uh, what the, the, this, uh, this professor was trying to uh, demonstrate is that, is that there is a very good coloration, uh, uh, correlation between uh, soil organic matter and uh, in the uh, above ground uh, uh, control of pests. That is, is not immediate to, to, to be realized, but that, uh, you know, increasing organic matter in soil can have a, a positive role in pest control on the plants. And we are, we are speaking about two, three meters tall uh, no, biomass. So it's not so immediate, but... Uh, and there, is, uh, there are very few uh, robust studies on that topic. So treating well the soil, managing well the soil fertility will reduce even the pest attack in the citrus orchards in organic ones. That's the key message. What is quite important even to say is that, uh, um, as I told before, the distance between the reading facilities of beneficials and the place in which we are going to have these launches must be the closest that we can. For these reasons, in Italy, in Sicily as well, in the southern part, but even in uh, Spain, such as in the Comunitat Valenciana, there are some, uh, let's say, common uh, in insectarium uh, or uh, collective ones. Because the farmers uh, make an alliance between them, 
in order to rear these beneficials in some specified and devoted uh, uh, environment. I should tell that this is not easy, but not because of the farmer or the worker kind of work, but uh, the continuum is quite important because this is a never-ending activity. The reading of uh, communes, uh, of um, colonies uh, of these beneficials must take place all over the year even very far from the months in which we will do the launches. So all the year we must keep these colonies alive and increase the number of beneficials once it is they are necessary since the early spring until the late autumn because the period of flowering or possibility of launching is a very long period according to the varieties that we cultivated. We have to use uh, sprouts of uh, to, of uh, potatoes, or in some case we have another school, let's say in Italy, in Italy about pumpkins, in order to rear first the mealybug, and then to rear on them the beneficials, such as or cryptolemons or leptomastics. So, even if we have a long experience, I'm speaking about my institution, but even an institution coming from Sicily in rearing the insects, and at the end of the story, I can tell that it's not so much complicated. What is complicated is to make the farmer believe that working all the year with some operators is quite important for their activity that will take place in the summer. For this reason, we need to be financed from the regional entities, from the national entities, and one of the possible wishes or key message to leave for the Biofruit Net projects is to create a sort of community of this insectarium all among the Mediterranean countries who are interested. Because, as we have seen, they are not so only important for citrus, but an insectarium is quite important for a lot of other things, even beneficial to be used in stone fruits or in palm fruits, like we discussed in other meetings of the BioFruit Net project. So I do believe that this is a key of cooperation. And uh, activities, uh, professionalities, uh, guidelines, uh, way of uh, using it, uh, monitoring, uh, that I still repeat is the most important action we have to do. It's quite, quite uh, the key message to live for the farmers who wants to grow and believe in organic farming. Giancarlo, even in fertility, we have a long-term experiments to have some results or not. Yes, yes. We, we demonstrated that uh, uh, conservative techniques, uh, recycling, cover cropping, increased uh, the overall uh, system fertility. We started in early 90s in last century in which we <clears throat> were supposed to demonstrate is it possible to grow uh, citrus organically definitely yes of course <laughs> in fact in this moment one third of uh, italian citrus industry is organic so uh, and we, we started with some trials on uh, fertility, let's say plant nutrition, at that time was the topic, uh, how you feed the plants. And uh, from that uh, started all the, the research on on-farm composting. And we, we looked uh, to uh, northern countries that were uh, much uh, more experience uh, than us, but and uh, moreover, we have still uh, the uh, an average of one percent of organic matter in soils. But in in organic soils, it's quite easy, even though even though time consuming, to reach two three uh, percent and more just with the combined effect of biodiversification, cover cropping, and other issues that organic growers uh, just now uh, know quite well. But once again, uh, it works 
once there is a network that is uh, a, a knowledge network, first of all, but also uh, these needs of organization. You can have a quite, uh, you know, large farm that can organize to uh, uh, produce the, the most part of the, the compost or, let's say, organic compounds to be used uh, for fertilization, but uh, the average uh, surface in Sicily is more, more, more or less two hectares. So it's, it's quite, and of uh, very specialized uh, farms. So they don't have machinery, they don't have, so once again, these parts of uh, joining together and uh, sharing, uh, first of all, knowledge, how to do, but also tools, machinery, facilities uh, for pests or for whatever. Uh, and that's the real problem uh, in our conditions, since it's uh, probably part of our nature, of southern people, to be individualist, uh, but I, we see in Spain, they are much more collaborative. So it works uh, uh, much better that, than in our uh, conditions. Uh, uh, you know, we are trying to, we are trying to push for uh, cooperation. That is uh, one of uh, uh, the main uh, gaps uh, we still have in our conditions. But uh, I would like to repeat that as well for the past, as well for the soil fertility management, what is important is to get in touch with the farmer, explaining them the life cycle of one pest or the life cycle of the carbon or the organic matter that we have in the soil. This concept must be the basilar one. It can be adapted not only to the citrus, to all the problems that we are going to face in organic cultures. Yes. Because it's a sort of approach that should change. Not exactly, I, you have this problem, please use this product or whatever. It's the understanding what we are dealing with is important once you want to make a correct organic orchard or farm in general management. As an example, we found that more uh, biodiverse uh, orchards, uh, either in citrus and in uh, stone fruit, uh, as an example, uh, that is the, that had uh, as a ground cover uh, uh, more complexity, had uh, at the same time uh, a much higher level of microization in uh, rootstocks and as a consequence higher level of phosphorus in the in the leaves that is uh, it's not uh, it increases yield no it helps to have a more equilibrate system and uh, this is part of of the uh, a good management because we found that uh, across years, there was a higher, uh, you know, global fertility uh, by means of uh, organisms like Remagoriza that are uh, everywhere. <laughs> but if we st still go on to till or to use mineral fertilizer or to, to, do, to have external inputs, you reduce the level of, let's say, self-compensation of, of a uh, more complex, that is feasible in a more complex system. It deals also with, uh, is not another concept, and it increases also natural control of, let's say, enemies, uh, either in, in the soil and in the plant. So it, it increases resilience. Le that's it. And you, you, we, we just uh, observed that 
as a consequence of, of what was done over years. We just looked for and found that. It's, it's not a, a trial, it's just an observation of a fact. First of all, there are two points that I would like to stress. Not only devoted to mealybugs, but in general about the so-called alien pests. At the beginning of my even, I'm not so young, but since the beginning uh, I started with the common problems uh, about pests. Recently, since 10 years now, I'm not dealing with the common problem, I'm dealing with the new problems. Because the Mediterranean Sea, whatever you consider, crops, um, annual, perennial, doesn't make change, must deal always with new pests. This because of of course, globalization, that we can't be so silly to think that we can stop it, but mostly with these new problems. Because what is important is that the resilience, as one, the, uh, the concept that even Giancarlo said before, is not present mostly in some of the orchards that we have. Resilience, in my thoughts, is always the ability of some ecosystem to resist or to be not destroyed from a new problem that arises. And a lot of them are coming. Even about citrus is quite recent, the discover of uh, a big pathogen that makes a disaster in olive trees, the name is Xylella fastidiosa, with a bacteria that was found in Portugal on citrus. And the chlorosis, uh, and the chlorosis that it generates is quite an alarm because I live in Puglia, and my region has, is going to be completely destroyed, half of them is already done, from the xylella on, on olive trees. So, to face this problem means also to be a big uh, person who is informed about the life cycle of the new pest, to get in touch with the researchers, to share the opportunities, and to create not a mechanical or physical barrier against the entrance of these new problems, but to be aware that the resilience is the key message. So, manage well the orchards, not thinking only about the incomes, about the possible money that I can have from one hectare, but thinking about how to be, let's say, constant, propagative, to have something that can be sustainable for the future, I think is the key message that the BioFruit Net as well, considering all the uh, crops we have considering these three years, must be take us key message to live to the future generations. And more because there is a, uh, both for uh, market issues and for uh, pathologies like it has been in the last 20 years in Europe, uh, Citrus Tristeza virus that uh, uh, changed the, 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 the you know that the rootstock cyan combination because it was found that there were some rootstocks that were tolerant not resistant but tolerant to this uh, to this virus uh, and uh, there is a, another issue is to uh, manage this new combination because and and more uh, globalization and market issues uh, introduce constantly new uh, new types of, of, of combination and we don't have experience enough in our environment since we, we have experience in the United States in Australia or whatever but uh, in agriculture wants to move of one kilometer is in another words also in the same country. So uh, a big issue is to have to, to uh, have more knowledge on that, on this new uh, grafting combination in citric culture uh, that uh, introduces uh, new uh, problems about management and about pest control. For this reason, is uh, should be important to have a uh, fixed, uh, stable network of knowledge exchange, a local and 
European level, at least, I guess. Fully agree with him, of course. That's one of the goals of your project, I guess. One of the most important goals of our project. To maintain it is as well after the end of the project, that will be in a couple of months. But I think that uh, the, mess the key message is to keep alive this kind of cooperation between the farmers, the experts, the researchers, and as well the public institutions, because we need to be funded for other kind of uh, experiments, uh, trials, uh, and networks as well. Thank you very much for the conversation. You're welcome. Welcome.